everybody, welcome back to Disco Elysium. If you notice, I'm still wearing the same clothes. Um, I need eight videos by end of day tomorrow and a live stream tomorrow. So, <laughs> it's a good idea if I record a bit more because I can. I am okay enough to record a bit more. So we're going to do that. All right, let's look at these. Ask Gab Leader about test you. Ask about Ruby in the village. Found the bullet in the washroom shack. Ask her about it. I will. I'll go do that right now. Oh, wait. I have another point. Let's put it into a uh, e ooh, uh. logic. Visual calculus. Why not? Except in close. Alright. <clears throat> We gotta go back and talk to that washer lady. Come here, lady. Our tent, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? Um, why was there a bullet under the floorboards of your shack? God damn that girl, she murmured softly. And without anger, a long and harsh life has taught her not to buckle under pressure. A bullet, the lieutenant turns to you and gives you a little nod. Then turns to the washwoman. You didn't put it there, did you? She did. Gone and hid things in there, she shakes her head. She's usually a good tenant and not a stupid one either. You rented the room to her? The woman, old woman sits in silence, her hands moving in the water bucket. Some water sloshes over the edge. Slowly she speaks, wringing out a rag. Yes, I lent my room to that ruby girl, as I've done before when she's in trouble, or just looking for solitude. I've made it clear, we welcome all kinds of people here. When was this? She came last Friday, left on Monday in a hurry. Her wrinkled hands need a blue rag in the water. What has she gotten herself into, that girl? That's for the police to find out, the lieutenant takes out his familiar blue notebook. Right then, please answer each question to the best of your ability. I'm sure we... I'm sure we have a few. You said she left on Monday? Yes, early with the dogs, around 8 o'clock, I think. She's probably heard the lieutenant Kinema's... The lieutenant's Kinema drive by, and it woke her up just like it did you. Kim, she must have heard your Kinema. Yes, that's the downside of having a 130 kilowatt engine. His voice is tinged with pride. It lets the bad guys know when you're coming. This is the room exactly as she left it? I cleaned it, like I always do. Was there anything else in there? No. The truth, sire. What is she like, Ruby? She's good company. Knows how to talk to an old woman. She rubs her cold hands together. At my age, you don't get a lot of quality conversation, so I, so I really appreciate that about her. Did she talk to you much during her last day? No, she was mostly silent this time, kept to herself. What do you mean? She tried not to let it show, but I could tell she hadn't come to fish. Usually she likes to cast a few lines, but this time she mostly stayed in her room. Why do you think she left the bullet there? How would I know? She's a gruff one, not a violent. She doesn't go around toting a gun. He looks back. To she looks back towards her shack, thinking. Did she have a te any technical equipment with her, like radio stuff? Not that I know of, though. She was into nice music. She once showed me a few mixtape millies she'd made. She brushes her forehead with the back of her hand. Water drips to the ground. Although I guess she was pretty handy with the mechanical and technical stuff. Even fixed the heater in the shack. <laughs> Sorry. You should be thankful for that. She's, she may simply have kept the equipment elsewhere. Where did she go? I don't know. Further up the coast. She tried to leave quietly, but the hinges on the door screeched like a cat in heat. Woke me up. I heard her rushing in those heavy boots heading up north. It's a peninsula. She might be trapped. After a moment of silence, she says, You'll never find her, you know. Her tone is without malice. She knows the coast like the back of her hand. You only just arrived. I wouldn't worry about that, man. We're persistent. Further up the coast we go, then. 
Are you sure you wouldn't rather stay here? Get a nice crazy fire going in the heater? She drops the rag in the bucket. It's clean now. Seems like a better idea to me. No, you can do you can do it. You still have plenty of juice in you before you drop. Behind the cinder block houses, old pre war ruins rise to the sky like dark palaces. The wind calls. Uh, goodbye, I'm off. One thing, officer, if you do find her, please go easy on her. She looks around. The air is getting colder. She's a good girl, whatever she's gotten herself mixed up in. Ruby left the village and went up close to explore the coast for signs. Okay, I will. After I look for the doctor a bit more. He's around here somewhere. The street sign is Ill Ill illegible below the graffiti oak. Hard to see the details. The colors all warm and welcoming are cozy though. Is this the old lady's house? A flower trough where nothing really glows, grows, maybe in spring. Okay, let's do this. I keep forgetting to hold the tab button. I am a fool. Take this. Little, little Lily. Hmm. Hello, mister. A young girl, barely four or five years old, sits on the sofa. She's looking at you with frank curiosity. She clutches a small stuffed animal. Occasionally, she twirls it around. Do you know anyone named Ruby? L Lubby? R Lubby? Suddenly, girl gets all serious and leans in, as if she's about to tell you a secret. Mom tells me that I'm a big girl, but she doesn't know that I can't say... Oh, or like sometimes I can, but then oh, uh, or kids. Lieutenant shakes his head. Are you Lillian's daughter? Yes, I am, little Lily. She gazes at you with her big eyes. You know my mom? Yes, we met earlier. That's nice. My mom is great. She nods. She's never angry or anything. What's this? Show her the stuffed bird we took from the ceiling. It's a goose. She yelped, smiling broadly. Wasn't Garten the cafeteria man the cafeteria manager trying to repair a piece of taxidermy? Well, can I have it? Sure. I mean, you already took it. I don't like it anyway. It looks angry. What's that thing you're holding? Point at her toy. It's Lammy. He's my friend, sort of like. She holds the fuzzy beast up to demonstrate. Lammy is a stuffed a stuffed lamb that admittedly has seen better days. One of the eye buttons is missing, and the fur is tattered in several parts. Lammy looks soft. Yes, very soft. Suddenly she pushes a stuffed animal towards your face. Press your cheek against Lammy. Isn't she isn't he soft? She's right. Lammy is very soft. She rubs the white fur against her cheek, then returns the lamb into her lap, cuddling it. Goodbye. Bye, the little girl's large curious eyes remain fixed on you. Aw. What is sweet child? <laughs> Industrial coal pellets burn with an orange glow. Okay. On we go. Do we talk to these children right here outside? I don't remember. I don't think we did. We can do that real quick, see if they've seen the scientists. Lillian's twin. The scruffy haired little boy kicks a stone. He can't be more than five years old. Lillian's other twin. Wait, so they're triplets. Oh wow, that's rough. The other one looks indistinguishable from him. He watches his brother kick the stone with his tongue rolling out of his mouth. Um, is Lily your sister? Oh, is little Lily your sister? Point to the house. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. You guys look identical. The stone kicking one becomes frantic all of a sudden, as if that's something to be scared of. The obvious fact that you just stated. He looks just like me, the other, the other one says. Yeah, I said that. The boy doesn't answer. His brother throws another rock. Both their hair is covered in some kind of dirt. The rock kicker was just being shy, but now he's enthusiastic again. You're bad with kids, the lieutenant remarks with evident glee. <laughs> Why is he happy about that? Uh, and what are you, Kid Master General? Maybe I am, he grins. Now, how about some actual police work? We're not getting anything out of the uh, out of here. 
Bye, kids. Take care. Uh, what is this? What are you? Take off. I don't, I don't think I was supposed to be able to take that through the wall, but I did. So, that's how that happens. <laughs> oh, drunks. I will take this money. It's mine. I'm getting so much money. Hi, Jakayla. Okay. A uh, thirty-something man clad in two-piece lycra. TM. Tracksuit puts down his pilsner and extends his hand Good in greeting. See ya. How's business? How's the old reality situation treating you? Shake his hand. So what's happening? Uh, wait, tequila? Yeah, tequila sunset. How are the um high concept reality base adventures proceeding? I guess I must have met them while I was drunk the other day. He says it like it's obviously your name. Like you call someone Billy Brunel or leader of the 4th Street Gang. I have re-entered <laughs> re reality to conquer it, to bend it to my will. I am the law. That's the spirit I used to shape reality into my image a long time ago. But these days are over now. He looks at his shit-stained lycra. Damn, jacket with a grim expression. Sadly, things ain't going that well in idiot doom spiral land. Haven't found those keys yet. Haven't won that great piece of ours back. No word from my business buddies. He takes a sip from his beer. Idiot dooms tomorrow, huh? This is bound to be a good high-concept conversation. At last. Have you seen a red-haired woman named Ruby around here lately? Can't really remember seeing any woman after losing my keys. It's a touchy subject. He hasn't gotten laid in ages. He really has no idea who this Ruby is, sire. Uh, what do you guys do around here? We're saving the world, he looks at his comrades. Please, please don't call. Don't call. Begs the man in the pipe. Looks like a cozy place to be, not gonna lie. Like... <laughs> If my closets weren't so full, they'd probably be nice little hideouts. I'm not gonna lie. I like enclosed spaces. I don't have claustrophobia. Unless it's like I got a choker stuck on my neck. A choker necklace. <laughs> then, then, then I panic a little. Okay, we're drinking. We're drinking alcohol. That's what we're doing. I tried to save the world once a long time ago with enterprise, creativity, and willpower, but that didn't work out. Now it's pirate's life for me. All right, be seeing you. You too, Tequila Sunset. Shut up, you bitch. <laughs> oh my god, but that kind of reminds me. Hold on, real quick. I'm not distracted or anything. I really need to plug my iPad in so I can make thumbnails for videos. Because it's gonna die. All right, there you go. Um. All right, moving on. See you guys later. I, wait, I could talk to those other guys. Shivers. A drop in temperature, an easy flow of air, an empty street. Before you, a thoroughfare, unjammed with lorries. No more drivers smoking on hitch steps. Just silence. What did the smoke smell like? Chemically sweetened across the road, I, a forgotten bus stop. Corrosion has opened a hole in its roof. An elm tree watches over the building. Its branches are dripping with rain and snow. The road is smooth and motley. Craters filled with black asphalt. The asphalt first laid is gray already. A row of tenements are under construction in the distance. Um, who are the people who live across the road? A tub warm with water, white with soap. A man bathes while radio waves transmit the lottery numbers. 4, 18, 21, 4, 1. A modern washing machine rattles a drawer full of silverware. What about the bus stop? Number 312D. Young girls used to come here, huddled up, hoping for more warmth than their thin coats could give them. The bus took them to school. It has not run for eight years. There were not enough girls to sustain its cost. What about the road? Craters pocked the surface. The children played in them until heavy trucks full of black pitch rolled in. The landowners have filled the craters with money. It's a vital artery of flow of trade. There's one bump... 
on the road. A dead dog lies flat with 200, about 200 paces away right at the turn. A dead dog? Tragedy come from the wheels of a fast RCM vehicle hurrying to work. The cold washes over you. The sound of the sea has grown distant. That is enough. The wind moves the aerosol. A detective stands behind the boom barrier. A breeze moves a curl of his hair. Alright, let's try to talk to one of these other drunks. Good to see you, friend. Do I have deals set up for you, buddy boy? He spreads his arms as if wanting to embrace you. Does he actually know you, or is he just shopkeep friendly? Uh, good to see you too, friend. So what do you want? I got smokes. They're cheap. Very cheap. I got Pilsner. Great deal. You won't get a better deal on that piss. Spirits I can let go for 300 real. Also, I have speed. And by speed, I mean amphetamine. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't want any of this. Quite the business venture you've set up here. Oh, he gets a proud gleam in his eyes. The system's been good to old Rosemary here. I'm milking her like a bitch goat in the backyard. What do you mean? You see, friend, he raises his index finger. Man makes his own luck, and I made mine real good. Got my hands on three bottles of liquor. Exquis... Ex... Mm. Sold two of the fellows around here and immediately invested the profit. Bought cigarettes, bought beer, even bought a bit of speed. And look at me now, I got everyone on my hook. He spreads his arms and smiles a crooked toothless smile. The hook, where is it? I can't see it. Um, looks like you're on your own hook too. Of course, of course, of course. The drunk raises his bilsner and nods. It is what it is, you know? What it's always been. People, buddy boy, it's people. Alright, I'm off. You make me sad. I'm in the civilized world. It's a custom to tip the shopkeeper friend, but come back anyway, he waves you off. Don't call Abigail. <laughs> and his name is Don't Call Abigail. Are you okay, buddy? Grumble's an unshaven man with a ruddy nose. He narrows his eyes at you as if in recognition, then turns his head away. The noxious odor emanating from the drunken man is strong and familiar. Don't call her, you Don't call Abigail. Who's Abigail? Oh, Abigail. Don't you fucking call Abigail. You okay? You're not going to get anything from this guy. He's too drunk. I'll just leave him. Don't... Call Abigail. He whimpers softly, his voice trailing off into nothingness. Okay, I'm officially saddened by this conversation I've had with these drunk boys. I'm going to... Oh, I, I cannot go over here. Well, I don't think I could go around either. No, okay. That's good. I'm glad that there's an end. Let's go over here. Uh... Oh, yellow spot. A little black swallow circles above you. You hear its drip. Can I, can I get up here? Maybe over here, over here? No. Okay. Blue. Water runs from west. The source is upstream. A broken pipe? box. I would take that. Hello, tire. Hello, other thing. Rest eaten letters read Mazat. Alright. The rear tire of a motor carriage adorns these reeds. Blue. That's the Nolan Vinsink? An unsuccessful model. Alright. There's too much to explore. I don't know where to go. Huh. Wait, wait, wait. Could I go over there? Oh, I can.
looking back at you from the rust-colored water. You. Alright, thanks, unhelpfulness. A kick drum pulse. The music is coming from somewhere on the ice. School of fish huddle around the fence post and scatter into the dark. Before you a draw bitch, it can only be lowered from the other side. Why did I do that? Full of holes. Could could the post hide treasure? Look inside. Sure. How do I get over there? Look, a house. Yellow. Okay, I want to lower this. How do I lower it? There's more posts to look at. Ah, dang it. How do I make this do a lowering? Yeah. More tribalistic markings is supposed to cover the little humanoids. A pole screwed into the ice keeps the tent erect. Trash from some end ending party. Tent flap. The tent is just tarpaulin fabric covered covering a pile of stuff. The flap is open. Inside three young men are listening to some new form of music. It's nothing you've ever heard. Only one of them looks Come at you. On. Get in the clothes flap behind you. The warm stuff's getting out. Okay, that's Sorry, pretty good. You barely have room for one. He points his thumb at the lieutenant. Oh, Kim. You go ahead. I'm too old for this. Okay, see you, Kim. I'm sure you will feel right at home. I'll keep watch. He just just for you to squeeze in. Okay, yes. I'm totally gonna get copyright this time. Smells like sweat and laundry detergent, plus a trace of, of ether. Trip. This guy looks cool. Canisters filled with what appears to be water, the label says distilled. A pile of nasal sprays, brand name. Nosafed Nos Ultra. A speaker, the big kind they use for live music. Go speak to Andre. I'm just annoyed. Okay, this picture is not very flattering. <laughs> Go speak to Andre, I'm just annoyed. A strangely dressed man says without looking up from his toolbox. Okay, I'll speak to Andre. Whatever. You see a youngest man bleaching the tips of his hair with a toothbrush. He puts the toothbrush down and extends his hand in greeting. Hello, I'm Andre. It's a pleasure to meet you. Take his hand. His grip is strong, sweaty, and warm. He is trying to project and inspire confidence. This is my Annoying. Ah. The young man with earrings looks at you with you looks at you suspiciously. That is interesting. He yells the tape player high above his head continues to blast strange music. Hey, how many music venues have you organized? Why are you here? We've been all over Jamrock North, prospecting for real estate to establish a new venue in. All the for talent. Yeah, thank you, Egghead. And while there is no shortage of raw, unfettered talent spinning tapes in Jamrock, we've had rotten luck with the real estate part. The place is a shithole. I, I apologize to my friend Noitz Pottymouth. I realize this is not how you speak to a police officer. I he has authority issues. There's no need the place is pretty Which bad. Me to the problem of occupied ecclesiastical property. I bet you've noticed the derelict hive of Narcomania on the coast. What are you talking I'm about? Talking about the church. And I'm not exaggerating. Even a place of spiritual refuge can become a magnet for all sorts of dope heads and burnouts if left unattended. Dope heads. Burnouts. He angrily spits on a screw, then starts cleaning it. You're weird. Well, I'm sad to say. That's exactly what happened. Sad because we were just about to put Martin A's on the map for one of the maddest dance clubs in Jamrock. Nah, strike that. In Revershold. 
Drag that! The word! And sadly yet, because the dopeheads and burnouts hold up in there with the worst kind. He leans back a little, watching you with a steady, serious gaze, letting you imagine how valid those dopeheads and burnouts really are. Good, this calls for an opinion. You're an expert in those. Uh, I won't stand for narcomaniacs of any kind. No narcomaniacs on my watch. Shake your head gravely. Yes, yes, the worst part is they're also spooky. What do you mean by spooky? I was hoping you would be the judge of that, officer. All I can say is their spookiness is the kind that keeps us from restoring this church into, the, into a community center and a place of spiritual refuge. Also, they don't heat or clean the building. Shit's gonna collapse. People just want to spin tapes without them spooking it up. Places bad signs. See? No one can dance like that. Thank you, Edhead. Egghead. It turns to you. So you're gonna look into it, right? It should be a police matter getting them out. Whatever spooky stuff they're doing. I'm not sure what the ecclesiates meant their property for. I'll look into it. Tell me more. Alright, man. He claps his hands enthusiastically. What's the status of the church? I haven't gotten inside the building yet. I asked Noi to install a measure against more drifts wandering in. A padlock. It's a temporary fix, just something to contain the situation. I had to do it in a hurry, not my best work, but it should hold for a while. What about the key? Of course, no you'd give the officer the key. Uh, mm. Alright, the speed freak di dips into his belt pack and produces the yellow key. He then makes a sudden, cool, infused move, tossing it in your general direction. <laughs> Let it fall to the ground and pick it up like a normal adult person. I wouldn't do that. I'd try to catch it, and then I'd fumble it, and then I'd drop it on the floor, and then I'd feel embarrassed and have to pick it up anyway. <laughs> We're gonna try and catch it. You sense the trajectory of the little piece of metal and plastic. The object makes a small ringing sound as it approaches. Just the tiniest chime to your left. Catch it. ka -ching. The key hits your palm. The sound speed freaks nod to you approvingly. Thanks, man. Play it cool. The speed, freaks. the speed freak nods to you. How long have those people been locked in there? Not long, like a week maybe, he shrugs. How can you be sure they haven't starved to death? I'm super sure they're alive. I mean, come on, I'm at least 90%, maybe 85% sure they're still alive there. Somewhere in the ruinous past that led you here, there was something called exams. You may have learned the term involuntary manslaughter there. Andre, do you know what involuntary manslaughter means? Yes, I do. I listen to Channel 8 all the time. I know about crime stuff, and I assure you, officer, this is not what's happening here. I'm at least 80% sure they're alive. I mean, come on, most people aren't ever that alive in their entire lives. What does that even mean? I don't know, he pauses to think. What does anything mean, really? <laughs> that's that's going to be my excuse for whenever I say something stupid. <laughs> what, what does anything mean? Oh yeah, he looks at his friend with an expression of profound understanding. Sounds like nonsense. You're right, it is nonsense. Total garbage, I knew you'd see through it. You're one smart cop. I get by. Now, where was I with that padlock? He nods attentively, ready to answer the questions of smart of one smart cop. Right, another question. Who exactly are these people in inside the church? Truth is, I don't really know. None of us do. I don't even know how many there are. All we've seen are glimpses. You haven't even seen them and you want the police involved? Well, he leans in for emphasis. There's also the machinery. Oh my god. I think he locked the scientists in there. Oh my god. When I first scouted the place back in February, it was abandoned. Empty. Took some time getting the crew together. So about two weeks ago, we came here hoping to set the stuff up. Suddenly there are these strange machines lying around in there. One of them has wires running into bowls of water. Wires into water. Never seen anything like it. Andre, tell him about the feeling. Oh, and it felt like there was some thing in there with us watching us from the dark. No, the other one. Um, which other one? I'm not as in tune with my emotions as you are, Egg. Felt like silence. Awful silence. But you haven't physically seen anyone? Not exactly. We've just seen someone who we think is a woman go in and out of the church a couple of times. They felt someone or something eyeing us inside, but that's kind of it. The woman? Red hair, maybe? The Lori woman? 
Sure, why not? Yeah. But not really. The other one adds brown hair. Old, heavy, dark signs. So which one is it? What Noid said. So brown and older. Ruby might have dyed her hair, though it seemed like a stretch at this point. What was that about the thing watching you? Like, you aren't alone, you know? It wasn't quite human, if you know what I mean. Not human, as in a ghost? Do you know what he means? It was this dark shape climbing upside down along the ceiling like some kind of crab man. That's terrifying. I can do some horror, but I cannot do skittering. Skittering is the worst thing. It's so terrifying. That's another reason I don't spend my time in closets. Skitterers live in closets. Spiders. <sighs> it was... It was... <laughs> Uh, it was this dark shape climbing upside down along the ceiling. Oh, I read this. A crab man. Yeah, you know, the way it was climbing up and around the ceiling like a crab. The other one agrees. It was stalking... A Aisle? Axel? Exhibiting ambush behavior. Odd. Crabs are usually marine creatures and not known for climbing walls. Are you sure there was a crab man? Yeah, totally. I mean, I didn't personally see it. Axel. Aisle? was alone that time but i believe her if she comes out running and says there's a crab in there there's a crab in there so he hasn't even been in there lately is he afraid you should ask her about it but be nice don't tell her you don't believe in the crab you probably there probably is no crab man well don't let them draw you in with this nonsense can you tell me more about this machinery you should talk to noid about that i just got a distinct burnout and dope head sign from them Probably jacked up to some snuff station too, probably very likely. So, how can you be sure they're burnouts and dope heads if you haven't seen them? Well, honestly, I can't, but I am. This is below... F this is a below feeble attempt at avoidance. Basically, is attempting to weaponize idiocy. Wow, you can't, but you do? I should add weaponized idiocy to my own repertoire. Hey now, he frowns his brow. <laughs> Furrows. <laughs> but I liked it better when it rhymed. I'm 70% sure they're substance abusers. Don't let all that technology fool you. He makes little quotation marks with his fingers when he says technology. Where do you think drugs come from? Alright, let's talk about something else. Sure, what? You mentioned some kind of ecclesiastes? No, it's so hard work. Well, the church, who are they? They. Oh yeah, that's a Metarian name for the founding party. Thought it'd be cool to use it. If you don't know what the founding party is, there might be a way to mask it with minor demagoguery. Mm. Now humor me, Andre. What is the founding party? Come to think of it, I've never really looked them up. And you know, I can't give you a precise definition, but they're a very powerful religious organization. And... And they have roots in the ancient mass society, he pauses. And they're custodians of the Pericarnasian church. Plus, they anoint the innocents. They, like, make the innocent, in, innocentic system, no? Um, now, Andre, in your opinion, would this ancient religious organization who anoints the innocents want a dance club in one of their churches? Totally! There isn't a dan trace of doubt in his voice. The Pericarnasian church is about love. Anodotic music is about love. I got love for my per 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 Passe. <laughs> love is the relay out of death. We dance. He violently shakes the tape player as if to see if he can break it. Love is hardcore. Unity. Unity! Makes a noise from an insolidian passe. He turns the volume up and looks at you with a knowing nod, as if it's obvious you will not break into dance. You feel it, the anodes and the cathodes coursing through you. Your big toe starts tapping along to the bass, as if testing the water. Uh, no words, enjoy the beat, nod your head. Feels good. Um. Um. I, no, 
now understand it was lame of me to suggest otherwise. Anodotic music is about love, and so is the Pericarnusian church. <laughs> Yer! Yukokata? The place to be! Do it for the masses, do it for the crew. His friend forms a fist with his screwberry were still in his hand. Provingly so. Uh, I didn't want to say it, but it was pretty lame of you to imply otherwise. Anyway, you got more questions? The one with the large head is still looking at you, nodding his head, waiting for your body to start moving. You feel like you could go for a little disco when or if they get this club going. You've got it in you. I wanted to ask you about this tent full of equipment. Yes? What? Uh, what's with all the nosefed? The what now? He leans in to hear you better. Pointing at the bottles of nasal spray in the corner. The nosefed ultra. You have a lot of it lying around. Oh, the old ultra. We, um... He's like an actor, looking to the souffleur for his line. We have a major sinus infection. Stuffy nose. We all do. Shit's all blasted up. Winter. Can't even breathe. You sound fine to me. Yes, he nods energetically. That's what the Nosefed's doing. Without the Nosa, I'd be drowning in shit right now. Nosefed is the shit. Good, now on to the next thing. Yes, what? I see you brought your own water. Yeah, yeah, good to have. Bitch to carry. When I first got to the place, I did some reconnaissance. I'm not sure the church even has running water. And it's distilled, too. Oh? He doesn't know what to say. It's the one they sell at the fuel station. It's like he's lying to you, my liege, but he's slippery enough that there's nothing for you to grab hold of. I hate to tell you, but it reeks sweat in here. It does, doesn't it? Told you we have a smell problem. He picks up a piece of telephone cord and inspects it. Um. Wait, I also smell ether. Why? Ether? I don't smell ether. Do you know it? Nope. It's mixed with a peculiar chemical scent, like laundry detergent. He sniffs the air, then shrugs. It doesn't take a forensic scientist to guess it's drug related. They look and act like the kind of guys who've done their fair share. Yet they lock some people into a church because they thought they were doing drugs and being weird. However, their breathing is regular. Their jaws stay put and their pupils aren't dilated, so not under the influence right now. At least not under the influence of stimulants. That doesn't rule out hallucinogens, benzos, some depressants. How do you know all this? Alright, enough of this. He nods enthusiastically, no doubt a little relieved. Ooh. I got minus for convincing him I was a smart cop? That's it for now. Be careful in there, officer, and tell us how it goes, yeah? We'll be here. Well, thank you, autosave. Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? Um, I'm gonna win this in the one episode. Oh, <laughs> good. I didn't realize we'd been going on for so long. A number of things don't add up. Let's take a look. How about gather around, kids? Okay, kids. Now gather around. The young speed freak puts down a busted capacitor and looks at you. The one with the large head seems very enthusiastic about whatever you have planned. Their would be leader is less amused. Um, yeah, bad news for you, Andre. Things don't add up. Good things. Um, this isn't the making of a club. It's a tent full of laboratory equipment for manufacturing drugs. I have no idea how you arrived at that conclusion, but it's wrong. Look, we have speakers. He points at the speaker. One speaker. They have one speaker. Where is his friend? Did he lose his friend? What do you mean friend? The other speaker. You only have one. It's a one speaker system. It's monodynamic. You wouldn't know the first thing about sound reproduction in anodic music. Other speaker. Pfft. This may be the brain damage talking, but you've definitely never heard of monodynamic or one speaker systems. That nose fed is here for its active ingredient. He said it was for his nose. What more do you want? Likely pseudoephedrine. Almost exactly the shape of ephedrine. 
Ephedrine makes you happy, and so does pseudo-ephedrine. Interesting. The distilled water, cornerstone of a clean lab. And all the cellular based and all of cellular based life. What's your point, Lawbringer? The ether in the air, a useful solvent, good for getting acting agent out of a solution. Make up your mind. First is the sweat, then is the ether. He smiles nervously. There's no need for me to pile on any more, is there? Proceed. No shit, he sounds tired. Oh boy. In short, you tried to use a police detective to set up a drug lab. That's, he waves his hand, come on, that's... Summary execution? What does that mean? Preposterous. I meant to say not true. So what are we gonna do with you? What do you mean do? Um... You tell me what's really going on here and we'll work from there. I can be lenient. What do you mean lenient? We'll see, now speak. He thinks for a moment, then opens his mouth, but closes again, then finally raises his hands. Things are just way too hard for an entrepreneur in this city. It's not like we're not gonna turn the church into the wickedest club in East Revishol. Because we are, we totally are. We just gotta turn it into a speed lab first. You know, to get our foot in the door. And why did you need me? Like I told you, spooky assholes moved in while I was getting all this stuff together. A month ago, the place was empty, and now it's all spooked up. They're not really spooky, are they? No, man, they're spooky, all right. It's just that they would probably also call the police if we started cooking speed in there. But the sign was way off, too. I couldn't feel the love at all. Sir, you promised you could be lenient. Um, proceed with both. They broke the law. They couldn't get arrested, but I could, like, put in a good word for them. Pack up and report to Piecing 41. Arrest them. No, please. The one with the large head presses stop on the tape player. In the silence, you can hear the wind howl outside. There needs to be a club for anodotic music in there. Everyone hates each other. Everybody hates it here. It's all just drugs and we're slaves and I can't. We're running out of time. Without a smile, he looks heartbroken and older than you thought he was. He looks almost as old as you. We need a win. I promise this will be a win. We won't cook speed in there. We'll do it clean. We'll do it true. We'll do it sober and real and beautiful. This will be a victory for the light. No, the law is the law. You break it, you pay. Don't break the law if you're not willing to pay for the consequences. The law is the law. If you avoid the call, we will consider you fugitives and hunt you down. No. He looks like he's at least 45 years old. What does that even mean? Fuck, man. You said you'd be lenient. He looks beat. What happens at the station? The case will be reviewed. You might get persecuted or not. We'll see. Fine. I guess we're truly done, he sighs. But first I need to see all of your identification documents. The would-be leader pulls out a card from his jacket pocket and hands it to you. The name reads Beat Andre. His friend hands you his papers. The name reads Carl Holtzman. Costa Tears, the one with the large head, hands you a card. The name reads Jermaine van der Wick Beek. Mark their names down on your paperwork and hand them each their form. I guess that's that. Pack it up, Egg. He closes his toolbox. I feel bad, but they did it. If they didn't want to get into this mess, then they should have just stuck to their music. That's my stance on that. I mean, sometimes people do bad things, and they didn't mean it. Uh, I've definitely done some things that I'm not proud of, but I paid for the consequences. I didn't like it. It sucked. And I learned my lesson. Kim, do you want to talk yeah. about it? So, point to your face. I shaved. Yes. Uh huh. Lieutenant looks. Lieutenant stares at your shaven face. His eyes narrowed. Uh, he mumbles. I don't know what to say. He coughs. Perhaps. Uh. 
Uh, I know. <laughs> what is it? You can tell me, Kim. I'm not really sure about this turn of events. I think the mutton chops might have been a better idea. They sort of seem to cover up some of the damage. Either way, good on you. The lieutenant gathers himself. You were saying? Nothing. Alright, well, that's it. I arrested some kids. But they were dummies. Don't get involved with drugs. Don't get involved with drugs, kids. It's not important. It's not helpful. There's better ways to spend your hard work. You know? Okay. Sorry. Not to get too deep or anything. Um, thank you all for coming out and playing with me. I'm a little sad to leave it on this note, but I'll see y'all next time. Bye!